This is episode 11 with Brian Drury. Welcome to the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, the show that empowers you to become the hero of your life's journey. With your host, Brian Tier. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, episode 11. And today I'm joined by someone who's become a good buddy of mine, Brian Drury. Uh, so we got a bit of double Brian action for you. But, uh, you know, like so many of us, Brian was fed the story that if we work hard, get good grades and graduate from a good college, that life would be good and things would be figured out. But he soon realized that, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. And this all led to his own personal development journey. And, uh, you know, he's now launched a book and a podcast and he runs a group coaching program all while working in a normal job. And we get into how he does that in the interview. Now, at the end of the interview, Brian was very kind to offer a free gift to all listeners. So make sure you listen to the end to pick that up. And all notes and links and resources we mentioned will be at briantier.com slash 011. But for now, let's go hang out with Brian. Welcome back, everyone. And I'm excited to have a very cool guest with us today. His name is Brian Drury. Brian, how's it going? It is going great, man. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. It's a pleasure to have you. So for everyone listening, um, tell us a bit about yourselves. You know, who is who is Brian Drury? Well, I'm a person who's working to help young adults, very similar to you. When I was reading your bio, I was like, me and this guy are on the same page. But working to help young adults who are passionate, driven, excited about life, but then come into the real world and find that they're disconnected and they're on a path that doesn't fit them or suit them, I'm helping people gain clarity on what that path is and then create systems and structures in their life to make whatever their biggest, wildest dreams are a reality. That's so cool, man. Yeah, and I was I was reading your about page too on your website, and um, I'll link to that in the show notes. But you mentioned there that you know, growing up, you were told a story your whole life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the work hard, get good grades, get go to college, that sort of thing. Um, I wonder if you could could dive into that a little bit and expand on that a little bit. Absolutely, it's something that I think is more common than we recognize, where we default into what we believe we're supposed to do or what society in general is telling us. And most people, myself included, didn't even have the awareness at that point to realize that I was living essentially someone else's dream. I was told, go to school, get good grades, get into a good college, go to college, get good grades, get a good job. And then boom, you've done it. And in my mind, it was like, okay, once I do it, take those steps and accomplish those things, then all of a sudden life's just going to take care of itself and all my dreams are magically going to show up at my door. <laughs> and I, when I got into my first job out of school, I very quickly realized that was not the case. And so it was that moment that I realized I had a decision to make that I could either just continue living a good enough, I'm doing air quotes, like everything's good enough existence or I could work and change and educate myself to find and create a reality that was far better than even I could imagine. And in order for me to inspire others to do that, I realized I needed to start living that today back in 2012. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you said that, you know, it's it's more common than we realize. Um, and I think a lot of quarter lifers or millennials or 20 somethings, whatever you want to call them, um, are going through this type of thing where they're feeling stuck or overwhelmed or confused and you know maybe they do know what they want to do maybe they don't know what they want to do but for some reason they can't sort of take that next step why do you think um it is such a common thing like people in our generation are experiencing these things i think you know, I don't want to point all of the I don't want to make all the blame towards the education system. I think that's like an easy cop out. Like colleges just don't get it right. And I've said those <laughs> things, you know, and like they're just not teaching the right stuff. But, you know, they I think schools and colleges and just society in general is shaped in a way to teach us that 
this is how life works. You do your standardized tests, you get good grades, you move up in a company. And so it's built to satisfy the needs of an old system. Now, what millennials and what people like us are doing is embracing this new availability of information that's never existed before. Because, you know, for our grandparents, you only knew about the jobs that you saw or maybe read about in a book. But back then, it was a lot more more effort to go to the library and get one. So the best job you heard about was maybe your uncle who's a lawyer and he made a lot of money and he lived in the big city. Now we have this access to see people who are doing the most incredible, bizarre, wonderful things. They're expressing themselves so genuinely and uniquely. And it's only by getting through – am I, am I able to curse on your show just to check before I do it? Uh <laughs> I do have a clean rating on iTunes, okay. so if, okay. you, if saw, something comes out, I'll I'll blur it out. But <laughs> no, I'll, I'll censor myself. But all of the BS, there you go. So it's like we have to get we have to get through our own BS and through the story out there to get down to what it is we really want, and then it's all about just taking the steps and having the courage to step, like take action in spite of the fear that we all experience. Mm. Yeah, I love that and. Just so, just so we clear. I mean, you you said you felt this yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Did you have an idea of what that sort of bigger vision was at the time, or were you were you kind of confused and didn't really know what you wanted, but just know you wanted something different? Very confused, uh, very, very lost. I think like most people, and for anybody listening to this show. Do not for a second buy into the belief that the people that you look up to, the celebrities, the you know successful business people have it all figured out. Through my own journey with this and getting to meet a lot of my real life heroes and connect with people that I look up to and that are on the top level, some of the top people in their fields in the world – I've discovered it's not that they don't experience this fear anymore. It's not that they don't experience this uncertainty. It's that they have found ways to overcome it and take action in spite of the fear. So for me, when I got out of school, when people ask me, Brian, what do you want to do? And, you know, I had studied supply chain in school because uh, my school was very good for it. And I was like, that'll get me a good job. And I had made a promise to my parents that I would take care of my student loan debt, which was $80,000 coming out of school. Yeah. So, you know, for me, and this is an interesting kind of paradigm with entrepreneurs at times, it can be this, you either have to dive in all out or not do it at all. And I think for each person, it's a unique journey. And for each person, they have to recognize what works for them. And for me, I wanted to take the approach of, let me create a dream life in the work that I do and the job that I find and create the time to build this, this thing that I really want so that eventually I can transition. Because with loans like that, I knew if I didn't find a good steady job to start paying, they would just you know continue with me for the rest of my life. So I said, let me not just find a good job or a good paying job. Let me find a job that creates fulfillment, allows me to live the life that I really see myself living, and then – build this thing on the side, which has been an amazing journey. It's been an amazing shift from the very beginning when I started out in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin, when I told people, you know, what's your ideal job? I said, big city on the coast, warm weather, uh, international, lots of cultural diversity, lots of like just difference and excitement. And I went to Appleton, Wisconsin. (laughs) (laughs) And I went there because I said what I and here is a a big message I'll share with the listeners when you're either looking for a job or looking to start an entrepreneurial endeavor, because guys, I'll say, you know, entrepreneurship isn't right for everyone. Don't you know, you don't have to assume that this path is the perfect thing because, oh, you make lots of money and you can create your own thing. It's not right for everybody. I mean, it's something that Brian and I, the, the Brian's, <laughs> enjoy and are working towards. But it's it's up to you. It's your own personal decisions. So don't get caught up in all the Instagram stuff and being an entrepreneur or whatever if it's not the right fit for you. But if whether whether you want to start your own business or whether you want to work up in a business, it's a, not about knowing what you want to do for the next 10 years. I hate that question. And when people ask me in the company I work at now, like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? In fact, they haven't asked me. And that's part of why I like this, this company. My last company was like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I was like, not working here and crushing it as an entrepreneur. And they're like, 
yeah, no, that answer doesn't work for us. But that's why it's that's why it's no longer your company. <laughs> right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's part of a big part of why I left that company. But um, it's get clear on what you're working towards now. You can look out into the short term. Uh, Cameron Harold talks about look out three years. Talk about your ideal life, not good enough for what you believe you can create. Look at your ideal life, then reverse engineer it to now. So I didn't know that at the point. So at that point, I said, I want to work in a big major company with an opportunity to travel in the future, and I want to use my foreign language skills because at that time I spoke Spanish. So this job met all those requirements, and I said, all right, I'm going to take this job, get started, get into the company, and then bust my a- <clears throat> bust my apples, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, and then – then continue to work towards these dreams. So taking it one step at a time, I think is so critical. Yeah. I love that you said your ideal life because I, like I recently, I work, I tend to work with a five-year plan, um, which Mm -hmm. I still find sort of realistic or achievable, but it's still sort of beyond your comfort zone slightly. But I used to have all these, all these exercises that I called like my perfect day and my perfect this and that. And I actually went back and changed them all to ideal because the whole like pursuit of perfection um i think is kind of a a pipe dream where we should more be aiming for like an ideal thing because perfect isn't really doesn't really exist i don't think and i love that you you mentioned you know finding a job that fulfills you and then building your thing on the side because i i mean i kind of jumped ship and decided to go all in with what i'm doing um and Mm -hmm. i tell a lot of people now like if you can build it up on the side because just quitting your job and going in 100%, it can make a lot of headaches down the line. But I think that mm-hmm. it comes back to what we spoke about entre- entrepreneurship, where it's not, it's not for everyone, um, but people just mm-hmm. need to get clear on like on what they want. Right, um, absolutely. So I wonder then, related to that, if you could give some advice on, um, you know, how to find how to find that job that's, that fulfills us while we have mm-hmm. time to build something on the side. Absolutely. So glad you asked that. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. So, um, cool. Nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Perfect. Brian, Brian's like entrep- or, uh, podcasting, crushing it as a host. Check. All right. <laughs> You're just setting me up, man. You, you give me the softball. Let me see if I can crank it for your audience here. Yeah, but, and this, um, is complete, this is completely unplanned for everyone listening. Perfect. <laughs> it's not staged. This is just on the fly. So, but one, before I go into those steps, I just wanted to really emphasize that point that you said about perfection. It is one of the most dangerous traps out there. And guys, we all get sucked into it, especially if you're an ambitious, driven person who has big goals and dreams. It is so easy to start looking at what many people call, I've heard Vishen Lakiani refer to it as the gap versus how far you've come. So you continue to look at Uh, Another quote that I love is compare leads to despair. So if I look at somebody that I emulate like a Tim Ferriss and I or Sean Stevenson, who's a good friend of mine now, was a hero and is now a great friend as a part of this journey. And maybe we can get to that story at some point. But if I look at them and I say, man, they're so far ahead and they've got so many more podcast episodes and they're making so much more money, it's It just leads to this feeling of inadequacy. It leads to these feelings of I'm not good enough and and I need to bust it and put my head down and just work hard until I get there. But the whole achievement fallacy or accomplishment fallacy that I'll be happy when is just a lie. So when you are able to create joy in the process, that's where the real joy in life comes moment to moment. It's not arriving at one big point, like writing when I launched my first book and it became a bestseller, it wasn't the, the actual act that day was exciting, but the next day led to some down feelings where I was like, Oh my God, it's done. What next? So that, that I don't want to go too deep on that tangent because I could go on that for a while. But you said, how do we create uh, a dream or how do we find a dream job and get a dream job? Well, while working and then build this dream life. So for me, it's partly about thinking differently. It's about doing things differently than other people. And I'm not just saying different just for like random nonsense, like come and wearing your pants on your arms. Like I'm not just saying (laughs) crazy things. I'm saying look at what really defines you. And guys, this takes a lot of internal work and takes a lot of reflection. If you, you will be light years ahead of other people. 
most of us spend most of our lives wearing masks because we're afraid that if we show our full self vulnerably, we won't be accepted, we won't be loved, and then therefore we put on masks to be loved and accepted and end up resenting ourselves for it. At my first job, I got into the corporate world, big Fortune 500 company, and at first, I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing or talking about, so I started using business jargon. I started dressing a certain way. I started acting differently, and very quickly, it became business Brian and real Brian. And once I realized that, I said, I got to change this. I need to be me. So I started being more authentically me. I started asking people questions I really wanted to ask instead of, hey, how was the weekend? Oh, the weather, blah. <laughs> and I started connecting with people deeper. I started doing better work. And this authenticity led me to say, okay, Brian, don't tell your managers and these people what it is they, you think they want to hear to get you ahead in this business. Tell them what you really want. I started telling people, I want to be a speaker and a writer. I want to travel the world. And it became very que clear very quickly that this company was not going to offer those opportunities. So for everyone listening, if you're in a job and you want to travel like I did, don't just sit there and wait. I talk to as many people as you can. And if you're getting the vibe that this place will not take you a step closer to your dreams, start to look up outside. You don't have, you don't have to leave immediately, but don't stop the search just because it's not going to be an easy transition in your next job. So then I started looking outside. I started to apply to companies that truly excited me and engaged me and seemed like dream companies to work for. Mind Valley was one of them out in Malaysia. And so I went through the, I created a video resume and went through this whole process, interviewed with four people all over the world. And then got to the point of the job offer and it was less than my monthly student loan payments. So I said, okay, this option isn't right right now. But then I kept plugging, I kept applying, sent out applications to companies that I love, that I think really fit me, that when I was filling out the application, I got excited. That is mm. such a powerful thing is to follow your excitement. Like when you start talking about something and you just get filled with energy and you feel like you could talk about it for hours, that is a great indication of something that could be that thing that brings you so much joy and that you can work with. And so I went through this process and then I started, I hired a career uh, counselor to give me some advice. I started listening and actually taking action on advice I've been procrastinating on, like um, getting my LinkedIn updated and just the basics. And then very quickly after I took those steps, I thought differently, created a new video resume that was more generic. It wasn't just geared to that one, towards that one company and then updated my LinkedIn. The day after I updated my LinkedIn, I got contacted by Google. And that was pretty mind blowing. Uh, I ended up going through the whole interview with Google, the whole process went to the Google Plex and ultimately didn't get the offer. And, but it was by thinking differently and by taking action that most people don't, because you've got to be willing to do what few are to get the results that few get. By doing that, I got that opportunity. And because of all the work I had done on my mindset, I thought I was going to be crushed if it didn't work out. But I said, okay, what next? And then the next day I got contacted by my current job. And in this job, um, in the last year, I spent 250 days traveling. I went to 10 different countries uh, all over the world. I spent five months living in Brazil. And this company also is fantastic, uh, pays much better. It's, I work with people that I connect with so much more and it's a more fulfilling job and has work-life balance so that I can continue to build overcoming graduation and work on all my projects on the side. Oh, man, that's so cool. I love that. So the, biggest, <laughs> the biggest thing that stands out for me there is like you had things that you had your, your sort of eyes set on and they didn't work out for one reason or another. But then, you know, it led to your current job that you're in now, which it sounds like you love. So, I mean, it. I think that's because when we when we actually take action and we're working on things that that will inevitably make us happy, like things work out, and like the universe puts whatever is right for us at the time, puts it in front of us. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. really cool, man. And uh, you mentioned overcoming graduation. Let's get into that. So, what's that all about? And um, yeah, just uh, give listeners a bit more indication of of what you're trying to do there. Absolutely. So. 
you know, in that same vein of what we talked about earlier, where I graduated, thought life was going to figure it out. I'd followed all the steps you're supposed to take and life still was really confusing and scary and uncertain. And so I started to go on a personal development journey, which all started with a video called Sean Stevenson's Dance Party, which if you haven't seen, it's one of the best <laughs> things to pick you up, make you smile. Have you ever seen it, Brian? I think I have. Yeah. And we okay, can link I'll, to it in I'll the send show it notes. To- Yes, this this is one. Uh, my brother sent it to me on a bad day, and this was actually when I started my personal development journey because it completely turned my day around. And I watched one of his speeches, and then I started watching TED Talks, Awesomeness Fest speeches, all kinds of YouTube things on development. I started replacing Family Guy and uh, <laughs> and American Dad reruns, which I I'd seen a thousand times with. TED Talks and videos that inspired and excited me and triggered new parts of my brain and new thinking. And, and so I started to get more ideas. I started to figure out things that I wanted to do. So first I created findingyoursilverlining.com, which was a blog for me to just see like, would I really like blogging? Cause so all of these things I've done, I always experimented first before I, I really dive in. It's like, mm-hmm. My dad, when I was little and I started taking guitar lessons, he's like, let's get you like a, you know, a cheap guitar, not a crappy one, but just an inexpensive one. See if you like it and then you can invest up and, and grow in it. And I think that's a huge thing in anything you do. Cause you got these people that are like, I'm going to start working out. They buy $500 of equipment <laughs> and they haven't even changed the habits at all. So it never ends up happening. But yeah. Overcoming graduation, literally, it was one day, the name came to me one day in my bedroom in Wisconsin. And I said, I want to help young adults. Like all these things I'm learning, I wished I had learned when I was a kid, all these things about mindset, about how to create lasting habits, about how to overcome the biggest challenges in your life. Because there's no class on dealing with emotional strife, on dealing with loss. And some of these things, I've had some of the most difficult challenges of my life in the past two years. And because of what I've learned, I've been able to pull myself through it, pull myself up. You know, absolutely, it hasn't been perfect. There have been lots of ups and downs. But overcoming graduation came about as a result of my personal journey. And I said, I want to build this company in a way that, again, I need to live this first. I need to live this message of helping people find and live their dream lives. And then I need to get better and better at sharing the message. And then from an event I went to, a guy recommended podcasting, which fit really well with me. I love connecting and hearing people's stories. And then now it's built out. So I published my first book. Um, I launched the business. The podcast is up around 50 episodes now and it's continuing to grow. I've gotten into, uh, affiliate sales. I've gotten into like all these different pieces and I'm now, uh, just launching my first ever group coaching program, which I'm really, really excited about. So that's been kind of the trajectory and growth up to this point. It's been a little over a year that I've been developing it. I love it, man. It sounds like we're on a really similar mission um, with what mm-hmm. we're doing. So yeah, I, I love it. And you mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned the book. Um, I want to, let's get into that. So it's, the book is the first step, right? Right. Cool. So what's the topic of the mm-hmm. book and, uh, what inspired that book? So this is, this has been a dream for my whole life. And, you know, I would always get that flicker in my head, like, man, I'd really love to write a book. But then all the negative voices came up and told me why I can't, why you shouldn't, why no one will read it. And so I always listened to the negative voices. And granted, I had never tried to write a book, but I just accepted this limited reality because that's what I had conditioned myself to believe. Mm. So once I started getting into all this personal development um, stuff, which I think some people can misconstrue like woo woo nonsense. Like there is some of that. And actually some of that can be beneficial if you open up your mind to it, but then other yeah. stuff is very tactical and very business like, so, you know, it all depends. There's so many different people to learn from, find one that fits with you because people are so easy to invest in a home or in the stock market, but so few investing, developing themselves. And I think that's where our most valuable investments go. Mm. So, Um, so I had this idea to write a book and I remember again, it was in Wisconsin. I was, it was a fairly lonely time for me. So there was a lot of thinking time. It was, you know, middle of nowhere, Wisconsin, not a very active place. So I took a lot to create a fun life there after I had the realization that I had to own my life. 
But then one day I was watching this TV, a commercial comes on, it's a guy holding his book. And I said, man, I'd really love to write a, another voice came up and said, well, what's stopping you? What's stopping you from writing a book right now? And the negative voice came back as well. I mean, how am I going to distribute it and publish it? I don't know how to edit and who's going to read my book and what would I write about? And so, you know, again, the myriad of excuses just came back and pushed me down. And then I said, yeah, 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 you're right. Two or three days later, same question pops up. And then that other voice comes back and says, no, what's stopping you from writing it right now? Negative voice tried to come back. Positive voice goes, no, I mean, write. I didn't say anything about distribute and do all these other steps. What's stopping you from sitting down with a pen and paper right now and just writing the first sentence and starting your first book? Because that's how all of these big monumental things in our life start is one decision one day and then small steps almost every day. Is free. The more frequently you do it, the faster the progress happens. And so a lot of people I tell this story, they go, oh, so you just like got down and just wrote out like 20 pages. No, it still took me another like two weeks because – I was just procrastinating. I was like, no, yeah. I was like, great. That's awesome. I'm inspired. Let me start tomorrow. And finally, after two weeks, I was lying in bed one day. I had this idea. The ideas had been percolating and I was lying down. I said, it's too late. I need to sleep. And I said, no, Brian, write your first line. So I wrote the first line of the first step. And while I lived in Wisconsin, I ran with a group called My Team Triumph. And if you've ever heard of Dick and Rick Hoyt, it's a father-son team that the son, uh, Rick Hoyt, has cerebral palsy. And his dad, Dick, pushes him through uh, half marathons, Ironmans, like pulls him in rafts, like takes him through these events. And he just stopped running at like 71. He's done hundreds of events all over the world. And his journey with his son inspired My Team Triumph, which is a group that helps individuals with disabilities participate in endurance events. And so Running with that group was one of the most pivotal and life-changing things for me because it combined my love for fitness and personal development with helping people. And I made some of the deepest, most beautiful connections. We helped, uh, my team Triumph helps people with every type of mental or physical disability. So war veterans, people battling cancer, people who have uh, any type of other disability. And so it's if somebody wants to run and they need some help, that's what the group is there for. And my experience is running with them completely changed my life. I went from hating the place I lived in this small town to learning to love it and learning that I was the master of my life and the only thing I can control is me. So why not use my control to create everything that I love and everything that I want to see in life? Then I just continued to dig into that. And I said, all right, well, let me write this story and told a story about a guy who decides to run his first race with my team triumph and the lessons he learns throughout it. And so the first three months that the book was published, I actually got to launch it from Brazil, which was an amazing, you know, like you talk about things just kind of happening in the universe coming together. I taught myself Portuguese back in Wisconsin, just because it was something I'd always wanted to do. And I taught myself in seven months how to speak it. And then a job opportunity came up for a special project in Brazil. And <laughs> because I spoke Portuguese and I was at this company that does all this traveling, I was the, the guy and I ended up spending five months down there. I launched my book there within three hours. It hit number one bestseller status in Amazon and uh, the first three months of proceeds are all being donated to my team Triumph. And now, like that period has ended. And but for the entirety of the book's existence, ten percent of every book I sell is donated to help them continue to make dreams come true. That's amazing, man. That's so great. And I'll definitely link to everything we mentioned in the show notes. Um, but so valuable what you mentioned about you know. Even if it's overwhelming at the beginning, just taking that first step. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, like, I've myself as well, but even friends, they say to me, like, that, you know, it's, they want to do X, Y, or Z. And it's, um, it's just, you know, how am I possibly going to do that? And I just keep saying, like, what's the tiniest thing you can do <laughs> to start moving towards it? And even like, I mean, we're both podcasters. Even with my podcast, I was like, well, I don't know how to podcast. How am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just, you know, well, okay, let's see what I need to get started, like bare bones, minimum stuff I need to get started. And then, you know, do an interview and 
put it all together and it's really like when it comes down to it it's really not that difficult it's just taking that next tiny tiny step and i think when things do mm -hmm. feel overwhelming it's probably because we're trying to take too big a step at a time and we just need to break that down into something smaller absolutely my uh my coach that i hired and worked with for nine months a uh, guy peter scott is phenomenal he has a quote that I love and I remind myself of all the time is uh, clarity is not a requirement for taking action. Clarity is the result of taking action. And I think yeah. that's just so true and, and ties in with what you were saying there. Yeah, cool. I, I, uh, we mentioned Sean Stevenson a little earlier and I really I don't want to let this interview go by without um, diving into him and his work a bit further. So yeah, tell us tell mm -hmm. us a bit more about Sean. I know he's an amazing uh, guy, but for people listening that maybe don't know what he's all about, um, yeah, just give us some some insight there. Sure. Uh, and Sean is one of my favorite people in the world. He's a great friend of mine. I see him at least uh, at least once a year now, sometimes twice. So he is. He's one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Um, last time I saw him, I gave him a copy of my book and I signed it and I said you have had the single greatest impact of any person on this planet outside my family. That is totally true. I made it a hundred percent. So for anyone who's not familiar with Sean, Sean was born with a condition called OI, which is osteogenesis imperfecta, which essentially is brittle bones disorder. So when he was a child, something as simple as a sneeze could break a rib. And he is currently three feet tall. He's wheelchair bound. And so some of you might be going, oh, like that poor guy. <laughs> Once I get a little more into his story, you're not going to be going, oh. So Sean, <laughs> as a child, as part of Make-A-Wish Foundation, got to meet Tony Robbins, which anybody who's in personal development knows he is the, the biggest guy in personal development, if, yeah. you know, one of, <laughs> if not the biggest, and massively impactful. And Tony, so Sean had, by the time he was 14, 220 breaks and fractures. And Tony said, listen, Sean, if you're willing to make some changes, I can help you never have a break again. So he changed his diet. He started exercising. And most people with OI don't live a very long life. And Sean is now in his mid-30s. He um, went on to work at the White House, become a world-renowned therapist. He worked with Bill Clinton at the White House, became a world-renowned therapist. He is one of the top speakers in the world. And if you have a chance to see him, it is life-changing. Like, absolutely beyond incredible just go um for anybody listening if you youtube the sean stevenson ted talk he spoke at a prison after richard branson so he's at that level yeah. and uh, so he's a you know, best-selling author he's done all these things he's married to a beautiful amazing woman mindy kniss who's like i've met i've met her several times as well she's she's wonderful and so uh, the story of how I would you do you want me to tell you how I met him and how that went ha went or do you want me to dig into more into Sean and what he does? Uh, well, you mentioned like how he changed your life, so let's let's stick to that kind of uh, area. Sure. So I saw that first video, Sean Stevenson dance party, and then I started watching more and more of his videos, and I just found myself I. I a lot of things I watch on TV I'd feel negative about, especially when I used to watch the news, which I don't anymore because it was just so much negativity. And oh, one of the beauty <laughs> – oh, dude, it's, it's one of the most beautiful parts of my travel is I get to see – I went to the most dangerous city in the world. I went to uh, very dangerous spots where there was events going on that the news was blowing. They tend to focus – tends to focus so much on the negative and there's so much good in the world. There, there are these pockets of these terrible, the horrible people, but so much more of the world is just people trying to live their lives. So I watched Sean's video and I just started feeling myself getting motivated. I'd watch a video and be like, you know what? I'm going to get up and do that thing I've just been putting off for months. Like, why not do it now? And so I read his book and I was not a reader at that point. And that got me on to reading more of these books. Then I saw an opportunity for a webinar for him. Uh, at the end, he said, special offer for anyone who stays to the end. And for 200 bucks, you could get to spend 30 minutes talking with him. Now, Sean uh, does this thing called breakthrough therapy where people fly from all over the world to come spend 12 hours with him. They pay $10,000 to do it. And basically what he does is has you dive deep into yourself, uproot all of the painful things from your path 
help you get clarity on how to let go of them and then step into your power. So imagine being able to let go of every painful thing or the deepest, most painful things in your life in one day. And tons of people do this. So I saw an opportunity to talk with him on Skype and I was like, hell yes, I'm going for it. And I booked it. I ended up speaking to him for 30 minutes and I told him about what I wanted to do. And he happened to have an event coming up that fit exactly with what I wanted to do. I went to that event. I ended up meeting my future coach. I met a guy who convinced me to do a podcast instead of just a blog. So that's how that all got started. I met this new amazing group of people. I've gone to every one of Sean's events since that first one. And it's the connections. It's the people. It's ta- telling someone about your ambitious idea and not getting a look like, well, how are you going to make money with that? It's like you get people that look at you and go, oh, my God, that's awesome. That's great. You, you here, oh, you should talk to so-and-so. Let me hook you up with these people. And I've got to meet some of the most incredible people as a result. And Oh, and to go back to your point of taking that first step – I remember before uh, any of this stuff where I met and talked with him, but now after going to his events, we've gotten to know each other. We're good friends. We uh, will keep in touch here and there. He's a busy guy, but um, it's just great having someone like that in my life. And he helped me through so much of the, uh, the pain and losing my mom to pancreatic cancer. Um, he again, introduced me to my coach who helped me pick myself up in the most difficult time of my life and then continue to build this business and launch my book and everything. But it all started again, another day back in Wisconsin. And I was like, man, I'd love to work with Sean Stevenson. And all the negative voices came up and said, Oh, you can't, you won't, it's too much money. You barely have money outside of your loans to, to make your basic purchases. There's no way. And then finally, positive voice comes back and says, you know what? Just call. Just see what happens. Because my dad has said to me my whole life, there's nothing wrong with getting information. I don't have to invest anything. I can just call and see what happens. So I was like, all right, great. I'll talk to his secretary. I'll find out what it costs. And then I can set a goal for, you know, a couple of years down the road to maybe meet him one day. So, yeah. I go online and literally the whole process took about five minutes, which again, it's, we're so much closer to our goals and dreams than we think, but we create these massive barriers to make it like, Oh, it's impossible. I just won't even try. And found a phone number for his office, called his office. It rings. I hear hello. And I was like, hi. And he's like, Hey, what can I do for you? (laughs) I was like, is this Sean? (laughs) And he's like, and he's like, yeah, this is Sean. What's up, buddy? And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like a total like fan, fan girl. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, like, what do I, you know, I, I would love to say I was all like, hey, Sean, great to talk to you. But, you know, like all, I was so excited and like there's so many things I want to ask you. And like do you, I was like, do you, do you have a couple minutes? Because like I, and, and he's like, well, I am in the middle of something. But uh, what is it you're looking for help with specifically? And then he said, all right, you know, get back in touch with me via email. Then a few months down the road, the webinar thing, I actually spoke to him one on one on Skype and then the whole other journey happened. But um, that's one thing that I know millennials ask about so much is how do you get a mentor? And one, invest in the mentor. Like you need to show them that it's worth their time to talk to you. Because if you just come asking for handouts, that's like the most off-putting thing for, for any person, not just an entrepreneur. And when you've invested time to learn their material, apply it, if you go up to them and say, hey, I loved your book, I applied it and did this with it, then you've shown you've invested in them. And sometimes you have to invest and go to the event. Sometimes it's you got to travel. But if there's somebody you really want to connect with, there's always a way to do it. It just takes time. And remember, always come from a place of providing value first before you ever ask for anything. Don't do it with the intent of asking. Find a way that you can provide value for this person and then take the next steps. Yeah, that's huge, man. And I like, I keep um, sort of preaching the benefits of finding a mentor. I think it's massive, um, especially for people in, yep. in this sort of age group. And another thing I love that you mentioned there was, no, I've gone completely black. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a uh, part of it. Dude. It happens. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can edit out whatever I want. It's my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I've, I've, I've lost dude, what I was going to say. I mean, so. this is... I <laughs> dude, you know, part of, I, I like to do very minimal editing on my episodes because it shows the realness. It shows the, 
this is all part of the process. Nothing's perfect. Nothing is going to happen seamlessly. There's going to be internet glitches. There's going to be a recording problem. Like it's all part of the process. And I think that's part of the fun is showing people you don't need to be anywhere near perfect. None of us are perfect to live and do amazing things. You don't need to have everything go exactly as you've planned in order to live a great life. And I love the quote, uh, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Like yeah. we get so busy focusing on the future, we pull ourselves out of the moment. So I don't know, man, I say leave it in. It means less, less editing work for you. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, and the cool part is while we've been chatting, I just remembered it again. <laughs> so what I was going to say is something that you mentioned and it's See, one of the most, yeah, one of the most common things that I come across is whenever you know, you speak to people and you tell them an idea or a plan, the immediate thing seems to be, which is funny that, I mean, we are on other ends of the world and it seems like everyone's the same. It's like, well, how are you going to make money from that? Um, right. And, I, and mm -hmm. I think that's a really common stumbling block, which people are like, oh, yeah, you're right. I, sh I shouldn't do this. <laughs> and, it, and it never gets done. But I think like when that's the primary motivation, it's, it's, it's not really the way to go about things. And I think if, if you love something and you come from it from the right angle, the money stuff kind of works itself out on the line, I think. Yes, um, absolutely. But Brian, I do want to be mindful of the time. Um, before I ask one final question, I just want to take this opportunity to acknowledge you and thank you for coming on the show. Um, I'm just super, super grateful for what you're doing. I think we're on a similar path. And um, it's, it's just amazing the work you're doing with my team Triumph and your own stuff and encouraging others to, you know, to not just accept the, the old story that we told, but to actually create the life that we really want. And I just want to thank you for that. The final question that I have is what one thing can listeners do this week to start creating their own quarter life comeback? Ooh, I love that. I've actually never heard. I listen to a lot of podcasts and I haven't heard of uh, one where they say action steps. So one thing that people can do this week to create their own quarter life comeback. I would say the most important thing is to get clarity on where you're trying to go first. Um, as the, there's another quote that I love, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So if you're just taking action kind of blindly, which can happen at first and lead to clarity, but I would say in terms of gaining clarity, uh, here's what I would recommend. So actually, can I give your audience some free giveaways? Cause I like to give these things away and this may be a perfect thing for, to help people get some clarity. No, you're not allowed to give anything away. <laughs> okay. Well, um, sorry, guys. Brian said no. <laughs> All right. Go so for it, when man. I, Go for it. Awesome. Well, when I launched my book, I made a site called thefirststepgift.com. So the title of my book, gift, all one word, dot com. And it's a an opt-in page that gives you three free giveaways. Uh, nothing, there's no sales pitch. There's nothing here. This is just something I wanted to create to, again, provide value first and live that message. So the first thing is the passion finder slash dream job questionnaire. So I love getting deep with people and asking them questions about finding out what really brings them joy at their core and what are the thing, what is the thing or things that they're meant to do. So these are some of the best questions that I've found over the past almost four years now of doing this to really dig deep and get to the core of what will bring someone immense joy. And then we talk about next steps about how to bring more of that into your life. So as well as that, you'll get uh, the Rapid Language Learning Starter Kit, which will teach you how to learn to speak a new language in three months. I took the learnings from my Portuguese uh, experiment that took me seven months to go from zero Portuguese to two-hour conversations entirely in Portuguese. And you'll also get an interview bundle of some of the key interviews for the Overcoming Graduation audience, which is the same audience as the Quarter Life Comebacks. So my recommendation would be I don't mean this to be a plug thing, but uh, it, I really put a lot of time into that. And the people that have followed it are getting great results from it. So if you go to the first and download the passion finder questionnaire and fill that out, that will help you gain so much more clarity and will give you some direction on how to take your first step towards creating your dream life. Man, I love it. I'm actually going to go do that myself because I'm, as we record this, I'm, kind of like preparing to do the whole digital nomad thing um <laughs> uh, awesome so, fantastic yeah, 
yeah, so, you know, learning a language can't hurt. And, I mean, I don't know where we'll each be at stages in the future, but, man, if we're ever in the same sort of area, it would be cool to hang out. Um, oh, absolutely. But, but, Brian, I just want to thank you again for coming on the show, man. Dude, thank you so much for having me. I love doing this. I love what you're doing. I remember when uh, Zephan introduced us and I saw Quarter Life come back, I immediately was like, I need to talk to this guy. Cause I, and when I read your bio and read what you're doing, it just it got me jacked up. It got me excited. So I'm thrilled for you, and I'm really excited to see w- what comes next for you because you're doing awesome stuff, and this is really a special thing that you're doing, man. Yeah, likewise, buddy. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk soon. All right. Talk soon. There you have it, guys. That wraps up episode 11 with Brian. And uh, if you like this one, send it around to your friends and shoot me a tweet at Brian T and let me know what you thought. As usual, you can find all links and resources we mentioned in the show notes at briantier.com slash 011. And uh, make sure you pick up that free gift from Brian. Until next time, keep creating your quarter life comeback. Thanks for listening to the Quarter Life Comeback. Get started today by visiting bryantier.com.